In this Blender tutorial, I'll share with you my working process of creating this magical forest artwork. Of course, using our favorite Blender and something else. Watch this video to the end to learn more and don't forget to subscribe. I have a quick cell mega scans, plants, ground texture from the same library and the hero tree for artwork. I often get asked where to find plants model for Blender. Along with well-known plants collections such as Botanica Dawn, Vegetation and Free Plants Library, I also recommend checking out their station marketplace. Here you can find a variety of high-quality plants model for Blender, like this one, which I'm going to use for this magical forest artwork and let's start with composition. I'm copying this tree and pasting into my new Blender scene. Based on the design I have created, the tree seems to be positioned on a hill with small paths leading to it. To make this terrain look more like hills, I need to create a new plan. Then scale it and extrude the edges to make the basic shape of the landscape and I will return to this object soon. Now we need a camera to see what is happening in my camera view. I already have a default camera in my scene with basic settings, but I'm going to use a fisheye shy camera to emphasize the enormous forest space. If I look at my render once more, it's pretty interesting camera effect with some lens distortion effect, which gives such an effect of the large and deep forest. As if this forest doesn't end at all and extend into the infinity. Let's adjust and rotate the camera to capture more of the top part. Ok, how to make a fisheye camera in Blender? It's easy and everything that we need to do is change the type of the camera from perspective to panoramic and use fisheye as a type of camera. Now if I enable a preview render, the camera view looks like a sphere. To fix this we need to change the focal lens, but it should still be wide camera angle around 15 or maybe less if you need. I'm going to use 18. Well, let's get back to the landscape. Let's create a forest surface that is not flat. There are a lot of ways to reproduce this, but in this scene I'm going to use sculpting tools in a blender. But before we need to apply the scale, because we made scale adjustment on this plane. Press Shift A and apply scale. Now we can go to sculpt mode and if I try to do something nothing happens because we need to subdivide the mesh to sculpt on the surface. And Blender has an amazing feature, dynamic topology, which will subdivide geometry where we will do sculpting. So look at how it works. I enable dynamic topology and set 6 pixels, it's pretty enough for my goals. And now if I sculpt something, Blender subdivide geometry automatically. It's an amazing tool for sculpting landscape in Blender. I use a clay brush to make a form of landscape and create a path to this tree and hills without subdivide geometry. Blender subdivides everything and does it on the necessary part of geometry, only where I sculpt the details. Since I do a static image, I can match everything with the camera view. I am sculpting details only for the camera view, everything behind the camera is not interesting for me and that's why dynamic topology good fit because I also don't need a huge density of mesh in those places that don't act in the camera view. I think it looks good. Let's immediately add a part of the forest strip in the background. It seems to me that this may resemble some kind of ball, which will even emphasize the, the fisheye effect. And now we can fill this area with three trunks from Megascans. Again, fill the scene and think about composition. My goal is to use these trunks to emphasize this direction to the sky. But here we may see some problems. These trunks are too short. To fix this and make them higher, I enable here viewport shading and what can I do? Select any trunks, for example this one, and go to edit mode. 
Select the last edges and I'm going to use the proportional editing tool in Blender to stretch out geometry. But not too much, because as we can see, it also stretches the texture, though not so visible, but it also may bring some artifacts. I stay here and continue to extrude edges geometry to make them taller, but we may see it's, it also makes incorrect the texture. To avoid that, enable correct face attribute and extrude edges. Yeah, since this object has unwrapped texture, it also brings some unpleasant moments and the way to avoid this is to change the texture to some tiling texture or cover this place with leaves. If we look at the render, we may see that all the spots of the tree are not visible in the camera. Some of them are covered with uh, leaves, but other parts is just disappear in the light. So I can ignore that at this stage. The main thing is that the texture of the object is correctly stretched without creating visible distortion. Alright, let's discuss how to create a light effect This is similar to the light behind the forest. Firstly, I activate the preview render to see the actual scene and then I add the point light as the first light source which will be the main light we see in the scene. I move this light to a suitable position. Additionally, I want this light to be like ambient light, so I increase the size of this light source to something really large, like 10 or even 20 meters, and move it to the top part. I also increase the power and change the color to a cold color. Maybe something like this. Yeah, that looks good. Now it seems straightforward. To add some atmosphere, I am going to create a new cube to my, in my scene for volume 4 and cover the entire scene with it. I need a new material and a volume material. I've discussed volume 4 in previous videos, so I won't repeat myself. You can watch my video on my channel where I have provided a link in the description. However, the only thing I want to mention is that to achieve a more volume effect in your scene, we need to increase the volume in the render settings. I will move the volume cube slightly to reveal more atmosphere behind the tree. Next, I want to add the light behind the forest, where there is a current darkness. To achieve this, I will add a cylinder. I want to remove some faces from an object, leaving only a specific part that will be used as a background light. To achieve this, I need to add an emission material to the object and change its color to match the main light. Also, I would like to adjust the position of the slide so this is appear closer to the horizon and gradually disappear towards the top part. I have a gradient texture with the color ramp and I will use to achieve my goals. If I turn on preview render, we can see how the gradient works. I might make some color adjustment closer to the color of my main light. Now it looks like what I had in mind, a bright light in the horizon of the forest, then gradually fade towards the sky. In combination with point ambient light, it creates a mysterious forest light. However, it's only background. And now I want to quickly make grass and fern to make it more natural. So, as I said, we need to add trees with leaves to make the background more like a forest, as we already see these problematic places on the trunks that we got when scale and geometry are not visible now. But I will additionally cover these places with leaves so that this looks more natural, like a rather dense forest. It's also necessary to pay attention to the horizon line, where I'll just uh, add more trees so that this line is not significantly uniform and there is a feeling that the forest doesn't end here, but is blowing much further away from us. Also, we can additionally add variety to the foreground with the help of some bushes to make our magical forest even more natural. Alright, it's time to add some magic to our forest. The first is the light on the tree, which highlights some part of the leaves and the main magical light. I'll add a point light to the scene and position between the branches so it looks like 
light from the middle of the tree. Make the sides bigger to get more soft light without sharp shadow and increase power. Also I want to change the color to warm so that brings some contrast between the cold environment of the forest and the main object. Ok, somewhere like that. Next I'll duplicate the slide but with shift D because I want to do a different color and size of the light. Yes. Next, uh, I'll duplicate this light and place it in other parts of the tree so that it creates a scene that the world is coming from the middle of the tree. Good. I can make some of them of a different color and uh, place them in the leaves. It will give such an interesting shining effect. Next, I want to add light particles, as we can see on my render here. Only some of them will be added in a blender, while the rest will be added as an overlay in Photoshop. First, uh, I add a new sphere. It's going to be this particle. Let's immediately add the mesh of material to this sphere with the warm color. In order to scatter many such particles across the scene, I'm going to use a particle system. To do this, I need a new sphere that I will place in some places uh, as a light on the tree and uh, it will be an emitter for the particle system. Well, in the particle system, press the new particle system and I'm going to use a meter here. Also, we need the timeline. I'll open it here. Uh, Alright, in the particle system go to render and uh, I need to select this sphere which I have created before for the light particle. Now if I play an animation we notice quite small particle here. Uh, let's make it more noticeable. We see the parts but they are too small. I'm going to increase the particle size a little bit and I'm going to increase the variety of size right away. Immediately I can uncheck the show emitter checkbox in order not to see the sphere that I use as an emitter in the render. If I enable the preview render we may see that these particles have some emission material as we added before. Alright, but uh, all the particles falling down and I need them to fly across the scene. To do this I will go field weights and remove gravity to 0.1. This is much better, but we can still remove it to 0.05 to get more spread effect. So, as we may see, our particle disappeared after some time, because by default, life parameter is set to 50 frames, which means that the particle will exist only 50 frames from the beginning of animation. My timeline is 250 frames, so I want the particles to exist in all these uh, 250 frames. Ok, now they don't disappear, but fall rather boring. To add more variety, I'll add turbulence forces. This force brings some variation to particle, just increase the strength to 150. So, it already looks interesting, it's possible to reduce the force, will be better to 70. Let's stop in some frames, for example here. So, it looks great, I'll duplicate this sphere several times and place it in the leaves by adding more of these particles so we can create more magical. Play the animation and stop on some frame. I think we can slightly increase the number of particles. Everything seems ok, but I don't like the fact these flying lights are quite sharp. So we can add motion blur. 
to do this, I enable motion blur in the settings, but I change it to somewhere 0.1. Motion blur doesn't work in the interactive render, so we need to make a render. And we already see this particle have motion blur. The particles are slightly blurred depending on the speed of movement of the particles themselves. Motion blur will be different for each one. So I've got this render and I'll open a compositing in Blender because I want to add some glow using glare knot in a Blender and change it to fog glow. As this adds a soft glow to areas with light like here. Maybe a little bit less. Also no, it looks great. After completing all stages of work, I can now enhance this render of the magic forest through the post-production in Photoshop. But before we make the final touch, I want to add the last visual effect. I have this overlays with magic effects and I want to add them to the foreground to emphasize the magic in this forest much more. This is easier and faster to do than using particle system in Blender once more. For example, this overlay with green particles, I can place it somewhere here in the foreground to add more dynamic in this black corner. Even duplicate this layer. Well, let's add these blue particles to the other side of the image to make this corner alive. And also we can duplicate this layer and move it closer to the center of the picture. I would add more, something like this maybe, just on the tree. Of course using screen blending mode, it's just for the light effect. So great, combine all layers into one and, and make it like a smart object because I am going to use a camera roll with this layer. To work with camera row in Photoshop, press Shift Ctrl A. I want to reduce black point to get deep black. At the same time, I'll rise shadows to that the shadow seems not very dark. Perhaps increase a little bit in highlights. Next, I want to add a vignette. Not too much, but it gives more depth in our artwork. Camera row has an amazing dehaze, which by the way works both so to add such work and to remove it. Let's leave it in this way, I like it. It will be cool to work with colors. Camera Row has some pretty cool tools for color gradient and uh, local color correction. So I want to raise the brightness of this yellow. The same applies to orange and maybe even raise a global saturation for the whole picture so that this is a bright enough magical atmosphere. So pretty good and uh, next I want to pull up luminance for this blue color in the background. This will add more lights to the background. I don't like this green now, it's possible to make it more greenish, somehow like this. So, good. Camera Row also allows us to work with masks and uh, I don't want to lose an opportunity to use the masks. Besides, in Camera Row we have an opportunity to paint the mask. For example, I create a brush mask and I can select this part by painting the area and slightly rising the exposure to make it brighter. Then I'm going to add another brush mask and I'm going to highlight these parts where the leaves are highlighted on the tree and I'm also going to pull up the exposure. I can select any parts of the image by drawing a mask with a brush. It's really amazing tools that allow us to be flexible in working on post-production stage. By the way, write in the comments below whether the tutorial on post-production like Camera Row or DaVinci Resolve for animation would be interesting for you, because Blender is super cool and Blender gives a lot of opportunities, even does work in a Blender only, but Blender doesn't have such deep tool for the final post-production as DaVinci and Camera Row or Photoshop, so write in the comments whether you need tutorial on this topic. 
we've done for today. This is my final magical forest artwork. I hope you found some useful information in this video. As usual, some of the files from video tutorials you can get by subscribing to my Patreon, which also helps to my channel. So, thank you for watching and see you in the next time. Bye!